Hi friends, welcome back to 1824 Walker Farm House. Today I'm going a little bit off the, I'm going to change up a little bit and I'm going to be making an apple pie and I'm going to have a little bit of a different video today and I'm going to have a little series called In the Kitchen with Audrey Ann at Apple Hill Farmhouse. Yep, you heard that right. Apple Hill Farmhouse, not Apple Hill Cottage. And yes, you heard that right, Audrey Ann, and not Audrey. When I play back the videos and hear Audrey, well, my mom's name was Audrey. And my first name, even on my birth certificate, all my legal papers, is Audrey Ann. So it's going to be Audrey Ann <laughs> from now on. So it'll be in the kitchen with Audrey Ann at Apple Hill Farmhouse. Doesn't that sound like fun? Well, I hope to have lots of fun. And so let's just get into the video. Good morning, friends. I'm so excited. We have workers here today out on the farm. They're staining our Walker Farmhouse. And um, it turns 200 years old this year, so it deserves to be restained. And for the workers, I want to make an apple pie. This video is going to be a little different today, but I love to mix things up. So uh, early in the morning, I went out and picked some of our apples off the apple tree. And the pie is made. I'm going to put it in the oven. And I didn't realize when you have a YouTube channel, a lot of people email you with questions. And one of the questions was, how do I keep my pies from running in the oven? The juice, like from the apples or the cherry, when it's a fruit pie. And we used to have workshops here at the farm, and I hope to do it again. And um, somebody gifted me this, but I had one before it, and it's a pan with a hole in the middle, and you just put your pie on top of that, and then if the juices come out, it comes on this pan, and it's so easy, it just cleans so easy. So that's the answer to that. And I had a lot of other questions about things we, uh, how we do it, and can, and freeze, and so, um, Every now and then, I'm going to, and oh, a couple of you said, hey, I'd love to see more recipes. So I'm going to try to do some more um, cooking videos. And if that's not for you, I hope to see you in the next one. Uh, some of you have asked where you can buy the apron that I wear that has our Good Shepherd Farms logo on it. And I did order some, and I'll be honest with you, I'm disappointed with them. So, um, I've had this apron, my sheep apron, from a sheep and wool festival years ago. I don't know if there's a date on it. Oh my gosh. And um, so I'm thinking, I saw the manufacturer that makes this apron, and then just getting our logo on it, because I'm an apron girl. I like to wear, even when we um, had the shop, I love to wear an apron. I'm, I just get dirty so easy. So I'm going to put the apple pie in the oven. And the rest of the video, I'm going to um, try to answer your questions that you had about the things we made. And I won't be able to address everything, but hopefully down the road, you know, I will. So thanks so much for being here. and Let's get into cooking. <laughs> I had quite a few questions about the Mao High biscuits that I made way back. Yes, it can be doubled. Uh, somebody had problems when they rolled them out and cut circles into them. I wouldn't do that. I doubled this recipe. I put it in a bigger cast iron skillet and I actually cut the squares in the skillet. I just put the whole circle in the skillet and cut them and look how high they are. I met somebody at our local grocery store and she told me that this is their now family favorite or mile high biscuits. So they also freeze really well and I had to make a frittata with them <laughs> the day I doubled the recipe. Someone had asked if you can double the granola recipe. When my kids were home and I made granola, I did it times five. So yes, you can absolutely just keep going. You just keep putting them on bigger cookie sheets or separate it and put multiple cookie sheets. I had a baking day here. And, you know, it also freezes really well. So if you want to double anything, I say go for it. Someone mentioned that it would just be too long to make pizza from scratch in the cast iron skillet. But if you have a bread machine, there's usually instructions for pizza dough. Make it ahead of time. Uh, up to 24 hours in, you put it in your refrigerator just like any other dough. And then put it in your skillet and 
You saved yourself a lot of time. Someone asked if I can and if I would give canning instructions. There are tons of YouTube channels on how to can. I do not can. I freeze everything. In fact, this is last year's corn that we just finished before we're going to freeze this year's corn. I freeze everything. I mean, I freeze everything. And that could be another video down the road. We just got done with last year's grape pie filling that was in the freezer. And oh, this freezes excellently. So made some great pies. Those are corn cord grapes. And I have a video on those also. I don't know if you like corn cord grapes, but they're absolutely delicious in a pie. Did you know that pie dough freezes excellently also? When I'm in the mood to make pie dough, I just make multiple, multiple pie dough packets. I make a top and a bottom and I package them separately in a plastic bag because sometimes you want a quiche so you only need one. So I don't freeze the two together. You know, me making pies is like David on the tractor. I can make pies all day and he could be on the tractor all day. But it's so easy. You just get two of your pie doughs out. I always have cherry pie filling in my pantry. If company comes, you have an instant homemade pie. So that's so easy. I do the same thing for the cherry almond scones that I make. They're in another video here in the channel. I showed you how I do an oval. I cut them smaller. It's just so nice to get them out when you have company or you're just in the mood for a little bit of a sweet thing. I freeze a lot of sauces, tomato sauces for sausages, uh, barbecue sauce. Uh, this day, I just finished last year's barbecue sauce and I was making potato salad with it. And can you see that one potato? Doesn't it look like a bird? It looked like a bird to me. So I just had to share that. But I don't know. Uh, people used to sell those on eBay. <laughs> Stuff like that. But I swear to you, it looks like a bird. Can you see like the little feather in the body? In the middle of the body and the head? Okay. <laughs> and I too make our own spaghetti sauce. This was the last of last year's spaghetti sauce. I had some zucchini. I put it on the zucchini and put cheese on top of it. It's like an instant meal. We just got done making 20 quarts of meat sauce. And I make all homemade pizza sauce too with tomatoes. And when I'm making the meat sauce, I always make a pan of lasagna. I stick it in the freezer. And then I have an instant meal when we're busy out on the farm. I had a lot of questions whether we meal prep, meal plan, and I just think that's for future videos. And um, I would like to address whether you're cooking for two or 22. Also, somebody asked what all we do with our apples, and that's like for a whole video too. But David and I just love apples. And in a his history, a county, Westmoreland County book, our farm is registered as the first apple orchards when our township was settled, we had the first apple orchards here. So I think that's sort of neat. And it just goes with Apple Hill, our house and barn. We're, we have apple trees all around us besides our little own little orchard. So here I am getting ready to, the other day I was making apple crisp. And I just love the picture of David walking back down to the house. And he is our official peeler. He loves to play a game with himself and see if he can get the peel off in one whole swipe. <laughs> so not to waste a thing, we'll make apple cider vinegar out of the peels. Thanks again for being here. I look forward to my In the Kitchen series with you all. And hope to see you real soon.